with the holidays over and as the pandemic goes on and on and on, many students are still <laughs> learning from home and adults are working from home too. It's a struggle to keep the kids and yourself focused and engaged. It certainly is. Mm -hmm. And we wondered how to keep motivated. So we are calling in resiliency expert Dr. Debbie Gilboa for help. And we want to say good morning, Dr. G. And, and you know, you say the January blahs are a real thing, but it's like heightened this year, right? During the pandemic. It's so much heavier. It really is. I think our reaction to Groundhog Day is going to be really interesting because this year people don't care nearly as much how long winter will last as they care how long this pandemic will last. You know, Dr. G, you know, my, my thing is I've talked with a lot of friends, uh, you know, some moms who are working from home, and this goes for dads, too, who are trying to help their kids learn from home, especially younger ones who need more of that one-on-one -on -one time and help through the Zoom lessons or whatever they're doing. Um, and they're also trying to complete their own work. Some are, are nervous about losing their jobs. How do you manage that stress of all of that? So one of the things that's hardest this year is that our situation changed, but most people didn't change their expectations. Mm -hmm. And I, and so really clear communication, first with yourself, like, hey, our family needs my job for us to be okay. So this year, my job has to be the priority over my child's first grade experience or even fifth grade experience, right? Saying things like, okay, now that I've clarified that for myself. I need to communicate that clearly to my kiddos, teachers, to my family, right? To our, we got to talk about that as a family, what it can mean and what, you know, what can't happen. And I have to be able to communicate that clearly with my work as well. So if you are, and I'm going to say lucky, lucky enough to be in a situation where you can be working from home and not losing your job because you can't go to work or having to go into a situation that doesn't feel safe, then communicating, hey, these are, you know, I, I think I can fit in this many hours, but it's going to be disrupted. It's going to be a little choppier. You might see my kiddo on our screen some of the time. That is a totally reasonable approach, even 10 months in. I've heard from people who are saying that, well, sure, maybe if I'd had that conversation in May, but now it's January, I've been faking it as best I could for this long. I can't say something now, can I? And I would say that one of the advantages of 2021 and the pandemic is that people are appreciating a little more transparency and authenticity. Yeah. You know, I Good think advice. that's so important to give yourself a break, not hold yourself to such a high standard, because I think we do that with our inner voices, even when we're not in a pandemic, yeah. like we're our own harshest critics sometimes. Uh, you know, wh one of the things that, that I think is so crucial for all of us is to find an escape and just take a little time for ourselves. But how do you do that in a household with kids and, you know, maybe your spouse is there as well? I mean, that can become very difficult. Okay, so I actually wanna give everybody a little bit of homework. I hope that we've all known each other long enough that you'll forgive me for that. But I want everybody who's worried about this, who's thinking about this, to make themselves a list. This is actually gonna be three lists, so three columns. The first list is everything you already do when you don't like how you feel or you wanna distract yourself or cheer yourself up or manage it. And this list is everything the good stuff like exercise or listening to music or reading art or you know or, or creating memes and the neutral stuff like playing a video game or making yourself a snack and the negative stuff like yelling at your partner or um, walking away from your kids for a minute or drinking alcohol that's in an unhealthy way so your whole list every coping mechanism you have and then you scratch off all the ones that are damaging to you or someone else and you copy it over and that middle list is everything that you currently do that's what's called a neutral or a positive coping mechanism. And now you circle on that list the ones that you can do in your current circumstance, given your work, your home mm -hmm. situation, your partner, your parents, your kids, whatever. And that list you copy over to that third column because those are the positive and coping mechanism, positive and neutral coping mechanisms that are accessible to you right now and work on adding to this list. Talk to your friends, what do you do when you're stressed or bummed or overwhelmed? And you know, listen to podcasts uh, that might have some good suggestions or grab an online article that might have some good suggestions and figure out what works for you that's a positive or neutral coping mechanism that you can use in your current situation. That's great advice. Yeah, I don't mind homework whenever it's from you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. G, we appreciate it as always. I'm really glad. Thanks.
All right, Dr. Debbie Gilboa, resiliency expert, author, family physician, and of course, regular PTL contributor. I think this is great advice, not only to keep us motivated, but also to make sure that our mental health is taken care of. It's that so we'll true. Do the same thing. This many months in, we really need to check on that. Absolutely. Yeah.